Hello, Aussie Tech Heads, episode 262. How are we? How are we? How are we? How are we? Uh, yeah, another episode, 262, 3rd of November, 2011, Thursday night, recording live. You can watch us live.thesecrethub.com. Woohoo! If you want to watch it live, we can watch it uh, recorded video on the YouTubes, youtube.com forward slash the secret hub episode. Look for episode 262. But before we get into anything else, let's uh, welcome Eric. Hello, Eric. Mr. Glenn Goodman, how do you do, sir? How you doing? Not too bad, thank you. How has your week been? Look, my week's been remarkably um, smooth this week. Not the usual shit fight. Oh, that's good um, to hear. It's been remarkably smooth. The weather's still crap. It's mm. November, so it's raining. Um, but yeah, it's been good, but it's only Thursday. And yep. still one more day to go, yep. so anything can happen. Well, yes, anything can happen. It's been rather nice up here on the Gold Coast. So can't complain, can't complain. So, um, yeah, so if you guys in the lounge you, or listening on the podcast, you want to call in live, you can call in live to the show. It's uh, You've got to Skype us, though, and the Skype name is Aussie Tech Head without the S. I'll probably change that one day, but it's Aussie Tech Head without the S. You can listen to us audio only through via the Shoutcast network. Uh, you'd have to, too hard to explain. Just you know, If you, if you know what you're doing in Shoutcast, you can, you'll be able to find it. Um, also, our newspaper comes out, or our little online paper, comes out twice a day, and it's uh, you can find it at paper.aussietechheads.com.au, and um, that's about all I have to say about all that sort of stuff. Don't forget Daylight Saving still. Don't forget Daylight Saving if you want to watch us live. It is 7.30 Queensland time and from 7 o'clock Queensland time. Also, thank you to uh, Brad and the guys at Tech Webcast who, who allow us to replay their episode each week. Their latest episode. So the Tech Night starts at 7 o'clock Queensland. So uh, get involved. Get involved. All right. Where are we going to start? Are we going to start anywhere? Or? Start at the top, mate. I just saw that, that story you've got there at the top. Why don't you start there? All right. I will start at... It's now... It, it's titled, Stupidly Large, File Sharing is Here, and it's in Australia. Now, apparently, there's this bloke or this site, files.com.au, and it's uh, fyels.com.au. You can share 11 gig files. Can you believe it? 11 gig files. That's huge. Yeah. That, yeah. That is, that's, look, that's not bad, but um, really, with the internet connections we've got in this country... <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll take you 6,000 no, years to do it. We're not going to get the AB, NBN anytime soon. Mm. So, yeah, oh, yeah, so, that's right. So... So that's the just showing you the, the the web page there, the front of the web page. Now it's um so supposedly it's pretty good. They're not private f- files though. They're not private. They um they're not private. Oh, it's file sharing. So this is this is this is the uh, the new Napster, is it? Oh, I don't. Well, I su- yeah. Look, I, I suppose um they're not going to allow you to share copyrighted material. Obviously, that's in there. Frequently asked questions um about you know. I think they actually might be charging for cease and desist notices and all this sort of stuff. Not sure how they get, right. how they would do that, uh, seeing that you right. only just sign up with a email. But um, right. yeah, they're not private files. Aren't private. They can show up in a list of popular files if people start downloading them. Now the guy Holland, who right. was um, who runs the thing, runs this little little hoopla of a setup. He's upgraded his server, so he's already been around, but now it's up to 11 gig for the file share. Uh, for the file, he uh, used to run on the Amazon platform. Apparently, the Amazon platform became over costly as the popularity grew. He said, "I now use dedicated infrastructure with absolute fixed costs, so there are no surprises, and I can continue to afford to find to fund the project." Now, he also points out that he does not run advertisements on the service because, as he says, "I don't want to detract from the simplicity of files in both in terms." both in terms of design and functionality. So files is also a great mechanism for us to pr- promote our other up-and-coming services, which are one of which we are looking uh, to make a massive dent in the search market. So obviously there's something big coming out there for him. Uh, standard standard mm. files will automatically be deleted if they have not been downloaded for seven days or more. Fair enough. Fair enough, oh, I reckon so as well. I've just uploaded, I just uploaded a file. Already? And... Uh, Oh, yeah, while you're talking. It was just a one meg file, just a photo. Yep. And uh, I put it in the chat box there on Google Hangout and uh, click on that and it'll download. Yeah, nice. Nice work. Nice work. So that is uh, files. Files. 
dot com dot au files spelled f y l e s if you are interested in that sort of um that sort of stuff nice sort of and gear yeah that sort of gear all right good 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 work there Eric. download speed is pretty crappy so i'll just let you know that when you go to download a file it's running at 90 kilobits per second mm, that's not too there good you, go. you wouldn't want to be doing 11 gig like that would you no uh, but see they've got here become a member for faster download so if you sign up you there's probably you know you get an email i put it on anonymous um Oh, okay, there. right. Yeah. But even, probably get faster downloads. But even still, like, and, well, it's just, just speaking of download uh, issues, uh, like, I don't know what it is, but I've, I just looked at my my downloading um, graph, what I've downloaded through the week, and for some reason, the last three days, I've downloaded like three gig, and I've done nothing. So I've gone around and rebooted every computer in the house. <laughs> to shut everything off. Yes. Just is that a, bizarre? It what, is. What are, you, what, are you hanging off? what are you got hanging off that? <clears throat> uh, well, what have I got? I've got. Um, You've been streaming any stuff? You've been watching well, any? Look, I only the, the only thing what? I streamed today was I did stream a video of uh, what is it? TNT Tech Tech News Tonight or whatever it is. It's not a big what, live stream. Yes, it was the video live. But so um, that's probably about. Um, look, that could be half a gig there. In in if. Because their live stream is high quality rather than their, not like their podcast. So um, so they, they run, I think, at one and a half megs per second on yeah. their live stream. Okay. So, look, that could have been it because I know the only reason I was um, paying particularly particular attention to it this month is actually of actually coming down to the end of my 90 gig. Can you believe it? I've just, oh, really? I've, wow. Yeah, I've just been hammering it. I've just been hammering it. I've been um, just streaming some shows. I've you know got the Xbox going. I've downloaded uh, a couple of demo games from the Xbox. And, yeah, so oh, I've just, there you go. There you go. That's yeah, what it is, yeah. But, but that wasn't today. But, but yeah, no, I've just got uh, what a home server, PC. Uh, I've got the Mac Mini. I've got the iPhone, Android phone, iPad, uh, Media Center, Xbox. Kim's computer. <laughs> There's a few connected <laughs> devices, isn't there? <laughs> Everything hangs off. Um, look, I go through about in a, in a month here. I go through about 350 gigs in a month. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. That's that's huge, isn't it? That's a lot. Huge. You know, they're streaming. The kids are always on it. You know, mm. we've got six computers hanging off it. So. Yeah, that's right. But um, there's another one. There's a speaking of running out of things, the iPhone 4S and in particular um, iOS 5 got a bit of a bug in it. And uh, yeah, uh, look, I haven't, um, I haven't um, experienced any battery problems with me, but um, but um, <laughs> yeah, some the 4S could be more related to the 4S than anything else. Is that better, Glenn? That is better. Or is that worse? I've just no, that's better. Okay. I've just told Eric for those of you who thought there was a bit of a bit of a, a, a gap there. <laughs> I've just asked Eric to move his camera because he was we could only see half of his head, but he's better now. We can see we can see all the ugliness. <laughs> that's right. Not just fifty percent of it. That's 100%. right. One hundred percent. Uh yeah. So anyway, Apple have, have admitted that there's a um, to iPhone 4S software bug that drains the battery. Now, well, that's no good, is it? Because my wife. You know actually... what? The, I heard. This is what I heard. I, I read that too, but then I, re, I tried to research that a little bit during the week. I heard that the, the iPhone 4S has got a lot of things turned on, a lot of notifications turned on. Siri is always on, for hmm. example, even in the background. So every time you use Siri, it goes out to the internet or the 3G to get the information that you need. So the secret is to turn off absolutely everything that you absolutely don't need. Yeah, yeah. Well, with Kim's. Um iPhone, she uh, she said, oh, you should get a day out of the battery, which I thought was fair, because that's all I get out of my a- Android yeah. phone is a day, and uh, so oh, anyway, she, depends how much how much talking she's doing on it. If she's doing a lot of talking, a day is pretty good. I found with the Android, with a lot of talking, it'll be half a day. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably are right. I don't. I don't do a lot of talking on mine. Um, yeah. So um. Yeah, you might, you might be right there. But anyway, I, I got to the iPhone and I, you know, I took off search for Wi-Fi networks all the time and, you know, just turned a few of those little accessory things off. And uh, yeah. it seems to be getting a little bit better. I, uh, well, mine, mine, for example, here, I, I um, 
took it off the 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 um the hook this morning at um six o'clock. Yep. Hang on a second. Sorry, had the cough, but I had the mute. You're right. Um, six o'clock, and I've made a few phone calls. I've, I'm uh, checking Twitter, Facebook, emails are on on push, so that always takes up battery. And um, I've only used up fifty three percent. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's all right. Yeah, that's not too bad. At night. Yeah. So, anyway, so so Apple have um they, they they've put their hand up. They've gone. Yep. Okay. Problem. And they're going to release a software update to address the issues within a couple of weeks. So apparently it's just a, a software they're issue. Slow with their software updates, aren't they? Yeah, especially like with this one. Um, apparently it's a problem with the latest iOS five, uh, shortening the battery life. iPhones, iPads, and iPods, or whatever you got the iOS five on, it's the it's the operating system, not the um, not the good not old the phone. phone. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's um, not managing. Uh, applications properly in the background. Probably not switching off a few when you when you when you exit out of them because they're supposed to just pause in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's not that yeah, but they are pretty good phones. Like, uh, yeah, she loves it. She's hooking it up to iTunes, and look, I've really increased my knowledge of the workings of iTunes <laughs> since she's had that. Um, yeah, I bet you you'll be getting one iPhone five as soon as your contract's out. Yeah, well, I've got about another year to go, but. Um, oh. <laughs> oh well, it'll be perfect timing. Might be an iPhone five. Yeah, I'll be getting an iPhone five. It'll be two years by then. I've had mine. Yeah. I'm quite happy with the iPhone four. It's a brilliant phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, I don't. Look, my phone's been a lot better since I um, upgraded it to the latest uh, yep. um, version of Android, and it's been a lot what better. Are up, what are they up to now? Bloody scrotum sandwich or something? What are they up to? <laughs> I don't know what they're up to now. They, yeah, they're up to the ice cream sandwich. Oh, oh right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so that's all good. They're going all right, but uh, yeah, it's a lot better. Look, I'm happy with it at the moment. It's a lot. It's a lot, lot better. Um, I'm just going to slowly reintroduce some apps to it, so not to bog it all down. But I want to, you know, get the iTunes, um, the iTunes playlist app thing, so I can, you know, sync it a bit better than what I'm doing. And because uh, at the moment I'm just listening, I listen to Leo and that, but I just plug it in, and listen to his twit.tv or twit.am or whatever it is live. Just listen to his live stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, cool, cool. Uh, so one, everyone has been emailing saying, what's happening to Will? Will is still in the internet wonderland. <laughs> so I don't know what he's doing. But he posted something on Facebook the other day. He was getting some good speeds out of his Optus connection, but apparently it's not reliable. So um, we'll just have to, we'll just wait and see what happens to Will. Um, yeah, he's, he was on Optus Cable, as far as I know, and I'm not sure what plan, but he was getting 80 meg down and 1.3 up. That's the speed test he posted, so that's not too bad. Oh, look at that sort of speed, I wouldn't care how unreliable it was. Just, just uh, get on the nets and start broadcasting. I say. Yeah, one point three up. Like, geez, you'd kill for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, kill. I was only sitting back today thinking about MBN, as I do every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do too. It's just my favourite love love story acronym <laughs> at the moment. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, and then then I thought, it's like, happen. yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It's not well, happen. I reckon there's one sure way of trying to speed this this situation up, and so I'm all out. And I hope that the Gold Coast wins the Commonwealth Games bid. I think it's next Friday. Yeah. So, That's right. So but, I I reckon. But, but just remember that if, if if that happens, and there's a Liberal government in Queensland, you're not getting it. It doesn't matter. No, they they have to. They would have to. No, they, oh, they don't have to do anything, mate. Because they they play politics with everything. This government, anyway. That's yeah. another. That's for another show. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But anyway, so I'm hoping that you know, if we if the Gold Coast wins these Commonwealth Games, which is announced next Friday, I believe, then um, then I would suggest that that the NBN would be fast. Well, it's not till 2018, <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully oh. we'd have it by then. You know what? It still won't be built by then. No, no, it won't be. It'd just be a just be a God. figment of of uh, Conroy's imagination. But anyway, um, anyway, hey, anyway, anyway, oh, he, we're given. Called him a, a it's all too man. much stress. Um, Gmail, did you did you log into your Gmail today? No, I have not logged into Gmail. Why? What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing's wrong I mean, with it. I've I've uh, 
Well, I've logged in it through my iPhone and it just sends me stuff, but is there a problem? Google has finally unveiled the much hyped makeover of their Gmail email service. As oh, the, the browser version, okay. As of yesterday, anyone who wants to update to the new Gmail look can, but in the coming days, it will be forced upon you. You will have no choice. So goodbye, old Gmail look, which, which I think is good. I like the new one. Yeah, I've got a little picture up on the screen there, nice and clean. I like it. I like it. You like it? There's a couple of things uh, in my particular Gmail that I don't like, but uh, in the new look. But overall, I think it's good. I, I, I like it. To get if you've got the old one still, you haven't been forcibly pushed into it. Uh, to get the new Gmail look, you can simply uh, there's down the bottom right hand corner. There's a switch to the new look link, and so obviously you just click on that. Okay. Uh, oh, that's very clean. I like that. Yeah, it's it's clean, and also to accompany uh, the Gmail. They've also updated the reader to the same to the same uh, look as well, and right. I'll tell you, I was using the reader today to to just to gather some stories for tonight, and uh, oh yeah, it's nice and clean, it's beautiful. I loved it, I loved it. I know there's a lot of a lot of people out there bitching and moaning as people do about everything, but geez, oh, like change. Go back and play with your pensioner card. I say, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Flip it out the window. It's good. Change is as good as a holiday, and we've all had a holiday just today with Google. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Google. Now, did you have any stories, Eric? What did you... Um... Oh, look, I have a great story here, and I can't wait for this to, to come out because because when I start using this service, um, the, it'll be free bandwidth because I'm with Telstra, and uh, Telstra is looking at launching. Listen up, people. Telstra is looking at launching a subscription, all-you-can-eat online movie service next year, early next year. Right. Telstra IP TV director Ben Keneally said the Telco have been watching market developments such as the recent launch of the QuickFlix on-demand subscription movie service and the speculation of the US-based next Netflix concern setting up locally. So they want to jump the gun before uh, Netflix have been uh, hovering over Asia Pacific for quite some time to set up here. And look, either way, I would love uh, any of them to set up. Netflix might get my my, my dollars because they've got TV shows as well as movies. Or QuickFlix. And what's that? Was it QuickFlix? Or no, no. no. Netflix, the one in the states. Yeah, okay, right, right. They've got TV shows as well as movies. Hmm. Um, so you know, I don't always want to watch movies. Sometimes I like to watch, you know, it's half an hour comedies or dramas. You know, you know, Two and a Half Men or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, I um, but but didn't Big Pond? They've just sold their movie network. I thought they sold it to QuickFlix. They sell it to QuickFlix, but I would suggest that they have probably their non-compete. Um, what you call it? Their non-compete non period has probably mm. expired. So now they're they think they can now set up again. But why would they uh, sell it off in the first place? And, and money. They Why wouldn't you? But they wouldn't need the money. They don't need the money. I thought, yeah. Oh. But if um, you can set something for five hundred million and sell it, sell it for a billion, hmm. and promise not to compete for two years. Yeah. Then, okay. Cool. Yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, because like Telstra does have a, a big chunk of the market, don't they? Because we, I remember we were discussing this last week about uh, about all that and what was going to happen to the T box and what's going to be on the T box and you know were they going to yeah, buy it well, back well, from? I, I would suggest that they'd all, you'd all better get that from the T box. Yeah. Um, you know, so at the moment they've got stuff on the T box, but it's pay as you go. You know, it's like hiring a movie it's in the video store at six bucks or whatever. But this one will be a. It's going to come down to the pricing, and if I know Telstra, they probably they might start off. I hope they don't. They might start off a little bit higher than they should. Hmm. Uh, whereas Netflix, it's eight dollars a month, all you can eat. If that's pretty compete, good. And that's TV or movies. Hmm. TV, hmm. all you can eat. Now, if Telstra's going to compete with that, they're going to have to really watch their pricing. But then it depends on how much, how big a, how much they are to download. I suppose, like if you're with Netflix and you've got to pay for your downloads, well, you know, it contributes against your cap. Yeah, 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 that's right. It contributes against your bandwidth. But you've got to remember, too, their caps in America are a lot bigger than ours. Their standard caps in the States are 250 gigs per month, standard mm. cap for $49. Yeah. Whereas yeah. what is $49? Yeah, well, 49 here is, um, what do I get for 40 I like, get, yeah, well, I get 90 peak, which is 7 a.m. Yeah, right. to 12 p.m. 
all to 12 a.m. And you don't use the off-peak because you're asleep. That's right. Off-peaks <laughs> from uh, 12 to 6 in the morning, and it's like uh, yeah. 250 gig or something. But That's right. <laughs> you're never going to use it. I don't mind that. That would be good if you can queue up your downloads and go, right, I'll queue that up at midnight. Right, These yes. are the three movies tomorrow. I'll queue that up. I'll use my off-peak allocation, and then I'll watch them tomorrow night. Mm. But you should be able to do that, though. You, will you think that does that Netflix doesn't let you do that? Or, or you don't know because it's not here, I suppose. No, I don't know. I don't mm. know. Mm. But, um, yeah, so that'll be interesting. So so just going back to – I've got another little Google story just quickly. It's um, Google Maps. So we've all seen Google Maps, and especially when we've done the where is and the – where, where, where is and who is and how do I get there and travel.coms and all this sort of stuff. There's always a little map that appears, you know, shows you exactly where you are. Now you go on a, a website and you go, you, know, you type in an address and it goes, it's on Google, there's a map. And if a business has put that on there, mm. um, their maps are on, you know, on the Google search page, for example. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, from January 1st, 2012, Google's going to start charging... Uh, for the Google Maps API service when more than their limit, they've set a limit of 25,000 map hits are made in a day. So... Um, I suppose that's, you know, it's not bad. It's, yeah, 25,000. In a day. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I don't mind that at all. I'm not saying that that's... Right. I think that's probably a, a fair call, you know, because if, if you're downloading 25,000... Um, maps, or your users are downloading 25,000 maps, that's 25,000 hits, well, you're obviously making money somehow, aren't you? You're pretty oh, popular. You're getting rep- and if, especially if you're linking from Google. So, you know, yeah. you, you can afford it. So they're rumoured at charging $4 per 1,000 wow. views in excess of the, of, of, of the limit. Yeah, that's not a lot of money. But look, it was just a matter of time before they did this because yeah. you can't keep giving stuff away and it is a good service, so I don't necessarily disagree with this at all. Yeah, Google maintains the the limit of twenty five thousand free hits before charging will only affect point three five percent of the users. So that's all right. It'll be the big companies, you know, Apple, yeah. Microsoft, uh, then real massive guys. And if they if they get uh, five hundred thousand views in one day, mm. that's uh, one hundred seventy five thousand over. Um, the twenty five thousand, so four hundred four seventy five times four. That's what they get charged. So they get they get charged two grand, and they got half a million hits. Yeah. That's not that's not a lot of money. No. The revenue you would get from half a million hits would be more than pay for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that I don't mind that at all. I don't think that anyone would be too upset about that. Um, no. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> good stuff. All right, where where are we going? You got another one, Eric? We go now. Uh, that's your notes. Let's see what I've got here. Um, oh, Rim, but you want to talk about Blackberry? Oh, what about them? They got some Blackberry. music thing, the music thing. Because all they've got that, but the headline is Rim Rim's decline. Research in motion, obviously, who makes Blackberry. Rim's decline prompts call for company breakup. Ouch. Research in motion stock fell below its book value for the first time in nine years. Does anyone know what that means? Because I do. If you don't know, I'll explain it to you. So it, um, its stock fell below its book value. Stock value. Its stock fell. So the value of its all its issued stock. So yep. all the shares out on issue that people own, yep. the value of that together fell below the book value of the company. That wouldn't mean that it was what they were initially sold at. No, not necessarily. So, for example... If your book value, you look at someone's balance sheet, like a private company, right, Glenn? You've got your brother's, yep. you do your brother's stuff. Right? And on his balance sheet, for example, he might have um, net assets, let's call it a million dollars. Yep. And you've got liabilities of half a million dollars. Yep. So your net assets is 500000 So your book value is 500000 which is your net assets, right? Assets, mm. less liabilities. 500000 that's your book value. Yes. But the value business might be it's based on a multiple of his earnings. So if he's making $100,000 a year profit um, and his multiple is 10, that gives him a valuation of a million, even though his book value is only half a million. Right, right. The valuation, the, your value of your company is usually worth more than your book value, yeah. which is your, your 
assets. Yeah, okay. Um, but drops below that, you're in a whole load of shit. <laughs> because for people, your stock is worth basically the book value is the breakup value. If you were to liquidate tomorrow and you sold everything off at the price you've got on your balance sheet, all your assets that you've got on your balance sheet is a million, you sold it and you got a million dollars. Yeah. And then you paid off your half million dollars in debt and you had you had left five hundred thousand dollars in cash. Um that's that's your breakup value. So they're mm. saying that or liquidation value is another word for it. So the, the market is saying that your stock is worth less than your liquidated value. Oh, yeah, right. Good. No, so that, so so what's that so what they're saying is that what they they're gonna split up, force the company to split. Broken up and its assets sold. Investors now consider the former market leader to be worth less than the net value of its property, patents, and other assets. There you go. That's what I just said. Mm. Um, so shares are now eighteen dollars ninety one each, um, below the book value of eighteen dollars ninety two. Yeah, right. So it's their share value is nine hundred thousand, just say, or nine hundred million, or whatever it is, and their book value is a is is a hundred million. Yeah. Or a billion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Faith in its current model, that is the market. What the market is telling you, said Niraj Monga, an analyst at uh, an investment research firm in Toronto. He has a sell rating on RIM and says there is a 50% chance that the stock will drop below $10 within 12 months. Yeah, now, right. the only way yeah. they can get their book value below the stock value is to write off some of their assets, you know, revalue their patents down, in other words. Yeah. Which makes so what? What? For them suddenly. So what? They're just not. They're just not um, selling. Like they're just not. The company's not working. Well, the share price is tanking is obviously because people have lost lost faith in their products. Mm. Um, completely trampled by Android and iOS five. Completely. Mm. Um, I think they, uh, I, Apple especially with the iPhone, took them completely by surprise. They had no idea what their um, competitive threats were. And so, um, and they sat on their hands and they were very complacent because they had contracts with corporations yeah. and governments and, and all this sort of stuff. Oh, well, she'll be right. You know, she'll be right. No, we've got nothing to worry about because we've got all business people will never go to do an iPhone. But, you know, they did a survey, Fortune 500 companies, and something like between 75 and 90% of Fortune 500 companies in America, so the top 500 companies, big ones, are either using iPhones or are trialing iPhones to use in their business. Yeah, okay. Because I don't know, have you ever used a BlackBerry? Yeah, I have. They're a piece of garbage. Yeah, I, I've never, I think I might have touched one, but like when you look at it, I saw. I think I saw the latest one. And they've still got the, the physical keyboard on it. You know, and I think what a waste and a little screen. And Yeah, it's a tiny little screen. The black, the bold 9900 or the 9990 or whatever they've got now. But mm. I had the 9900. Look, I don't mind the look of it. But when you before you pick it up, yeah. But then when you try and muck and play with it, oh, trying to dial a number, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah, because I even uh, yeah, I don't like them either. I don't like, it. and I even heard that they've just announced some music service. You know, what ten bucks a month or something for all you can stream or whatever. But you can only put fifty songs on it or some some weird, some weird but number. They don't have they don't have a software platform to put the songs onto, and then mm. when you plug your phone in. You say you download it on your phone and you plug it into your f- computer, then what? Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Uh, gross thinking. What? Do you, what? what? Mm-hmm. It stops the papers blowing away on your desk, though. Yeah, well, that, that's true. I've still got my BlackBerry. It's here. It hasn't had the it's completely dead. I haven't touched it for you know a couple of years. Yeah. But one of their biggest problems is they've got two CEOs, right? Yeah. They're, 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 they're co-CEOs, the two founders. And, you know, you can't run a business constantly – consulting the other bloke you move too slowly you've got to get someone to take charge, charge. and go this is what we're going to do yeah and not just go oh, no, i'll just go next door to, to jimbo's office oh he's yeah. not here okay i'll get back to him tomorrow you know you can't well, you've perfect, got to be a little bit more well perfect example of some of a ceo taking charge would would obviously be um joyce for Qantas. do you reckon he, he would have he just come in took charge well no, that's it look at the end of the day it doesn't matter whether you agree with him or not whether you agree with what he did or you don't agree with what he did, the point is it is better to make a decision mm. than not make. That's right. Not making a decision is worse than making a bad decision. Exactly. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. That's exactly right. Mm. And so whether you 
the wrong thing or not. The point is he made one. That's he right. didn't sit there doing consulting with people and let it drag on and, mm. you know, making a bad one is better than making no one. Yeah. Uh, guess what? We've What's got that, a, mate? We've got an MP3 review this week. Ooh. Now, we've Wonderful. heard from uh, Jack before. Jack sent us an email before, and he's a listener every oh. week. So, hello, hello Jack. 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 Are you in the chat room? No, I haven't seen him around in the live in the live arena, but uh, yes, he, he listens to the show and, um, and and does the whole download business. And he's he's taken some time out and he's done a review for us. So we're going to have a bit of a bit of a play and listen okay. to Jack. Yeah, it's something. Hang on, we won't start that off okay. yet. So there we go. So yeah, so we're going to have a quick listen to Jack and um, we'll see what he's going to talk about. I guess. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to talk about. Um, there's something about Google, something like that. But anyway, let's have a listen to um, Jack. I'm just going to talk about something I've been playing with lately. I've recently acquired a Google Nexus S, which is just running the stock gingerbread Android operating system, which I find for myself, being a bit technical, I find it's excellent. I get a bit more control. It's easier to root and things, but the HTC Sense, I must admit, is better for the consumer because it's got a lot of the calendar, the calendar widgets and things are a bit more friendly. The weather dashboard on the front is nicer, but in general, I find the Nexus S just a nice phone to use. Battery life's getting better, but it's pretty poor when I first got it, but it seems to be getting better just with more use. Uh, talk about Google Listen, which is a sort of podcast app which Google provides, it's free, out of the market, and I find that the podcast app actually works better than the podcasting system in iTunes, provided you know the addresses or can browse the web on your phone. The issue there is you can't actually search within the app very well, because it will, won't find the providers it'll find a specific podcast and won't let you subscribe that easily and it's not very good within Australia but it's, it works reasonably well in America but all I generally do is go on the podcast website and get the feed which works well because it just asks me what program I want to launch the feed with and I just press listen and it automatically subscribes to it and the other thing you can do with it is set it to automatic downloads every hour or so and they'll just it's got a front screen which you can actually set to have the feed sitting on the front of the latest podcast which and it orders them from the newest to the oldest regardless of the provider so it's good if you listen to radio shows because you get the latest and you can listen backwards and things but yeah that's about it on that uh, the Google Plus I've been using and each update has actually improved. It is quite a large program, sitting around 30 megabytes on the Nexus. The desire sits around 23, which is interesting. I think it's just the screen size. But uh, Google Plus is good. It's not as good on an iOS with the iPod Touches, even the fourth gens I've found. A bit laggy and things. But on the Nexus, it's excellent. Uh, a lot nicer than the Facebook app for Android. The, the Facebook app for Android is still slow. It's always been slow. It just, it's a bit like they just don't add the features you'd want. But anyway, what can you do about it? Uh, just about Nexus S in general. I found the curved screen interesting. It's much nicer on your ear because it's it goes round your ear. But it also is a bit odd in sun. Because if you wear Polaroid sunglasses, it actually deflects all the light. And you actually can't really use the phone at all in direct sunlight. If you take sunglasses off, you can use it. But I've only found this with the uh, curved screen. So, anyway. That's that. Alright, see you later. Whoa, Jack. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was good. He's um he's put a lot of time into that, so he's uh he's right into his little gadgets things there by the sounds of it, and um yeah, so you guys can also send in an MP3 review if you like. Just send it, just email it to me, just like Jack did. Glenn at AussieTechHeads.com.au. All right, um 
where are we going to move to now? Oh, I, I guess we'll keep it to a minute and a half, guys. Yeah, about a minute and a half, if you can. Uh, that'd be good. That'd be sweet. And I'll tell you what. Um, well, I'm going to start. I'm going to start giving out some things, I suppose, for people that em- that send us stuff in. Uh, I'll come up with something next week. And Jack, you'll get something right. too. I'll tell you what I've got, and you can pick something. Um, all right. Now, what are we doing? Uh, how are you going with the Steve Jobs book, Eric? I am. I'll tell you. Hang on. Where's my phone? Because I've been listening to it. I'm up to nearly the end of chapter two. Hang on. Oh, I thought you were going to say nearly the end. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not chapter two, part two. Oh. I'm up. I was going to so say. So part, part one has uh, 46 chapters. Good. I finished that. Mm. Part two has 50, 55 chapters and I'm up to chapter 43. Yeah, right. I'm only just up to um, part one, middle of chapter two. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. I know. I'm you just... He'll come back as Jesus Christ and rise from the dead before you finish that. <laughs> look, what happened, where I listen to it is, look, so that's why I've got to, see, once again, that's the problem with having, I suppose, the Android, because it's on the iTunes, but me Android's not syncing to the to oh, the iTunes. So, Android. so that's that's a, problem. A, that's a bit of a problem. But look, I, I just lay down of a um, like afternoon, you know, or whatever, when I'm when I'm at home, I just lay down on the floor and just, just listen to a bit, you know, and that's nice and peaceful. Why don't you, uh, can, you, can you listen to it on the... Um you can't. You can't. Can you can't put on your Android? Yeah, I can. I've just got to. Um, right. Uh, look, oh, the reason why. As it's up, right. Yeah. Look, the, the see, I didn't know what the problem was with my phone. Um, like you know, three months ago, why it was slow and everything, and I thought it was because I'm just putting on dodgy apps. And uh, so that I've been hesitant to put apps on. I know it's so crap, isn't it, that I've got to actually worry about this sort of stuff. A lot, I think a lot of it is the apps. I think they've some of them are very they're not written well, and they they're not managing your battery life properly, and they're staying on in the background when they shouldn't. Mm. Um, it's bad. But now, but now it's going. It's, it's a lot better. So look, I'm going to start reintroducing all the all the apps, you know, and the iTunes playlist thinking and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, it'll be right. It'll be right. So you're enjoying it. That's the main thing. Yeah, it's, it's uh, look like I said in the past. There's a lot of stuff in there that I, I've known in the past, but just the basic outline. Yeah, you know, you know, they go a little bit deep, but because they he actually interviewed Steve Jobs for this, you really get the background story to all the facts that you knew about in the mm. first place. Oh, it's very so that good. makes it makes it really really interesting. Yeah, it's very good. It's extremely well done. Um, have you had a cha- Have you been had a chance to listen to anything else? I've had a chance to look at uh, a book an audible book and uh, I've gone off the um, technology um, genre yep. if you like for this and I've found a book called The Litigators Ooh. by a new new book by John Grisham we all know who he is yep he was uh, this was book was released on the 25th of October so just uh, 10 days ago or so and um, had a little bit of read and it's uh it's pretty good. It's about a, a street cop turned lawyer, an expert hustler and ambulance chaser, and a Harvard school graduate. Together they form a trio of, uh, of, of legal specialists in injury claims. Mm. And these are the worst. Law- injury claim lawyers are the worst. <laughs> you know, they injury they specialize in, in injury claims, quickie divorces, and driving under the influence. So, you know, the, Basically, the scum of the earth yeah. legal cases. <laughs> yeah, I've had none one of them have ever faced jury because they settle every. They settle everything, so uh, quite an interesting. Uh, it, it sounds like an interesting read. I, I will get this. Um, I actually might. Uh, I like reading John Grisham's actual books. I like to feel the paper, so oh, I might okay. get that as well. What is a different paper than everyone? No, else? no, I just like to feel the book. Oh, okay, right, right. So, so, so instead of li- instead of listening to it, uh, you say, and and as opposed to you want to actually read it with your eyes. I'll do both. I'll listen. I use a lot of the time if I really like a topic or a or a story or a book or an author. I'll do both. I'll listen and read. Mm. Now this one there, there's two ways to buy the the litigators. You can buy it for thirty one dollars fifty US, or you can get it for the um, seven dollars fifty. But you've got to sign up. You've got to sign up and get a. Uh, 
get a free credit. And you can get a free credit by going to the aussietechheads.com.au webpage. And there's a banner, audible banner down there. You can click on that, uh, sign up, go your hardest. And if you don't want to continue with the service after the 30 days, your free period, just let them know. And then that's it. Keep the keep the litigators. Oh, well, yeah. Keep it. Well, you have to pay for half of it, but keep it anyway. And then um, yeah. Yeah, you can bail. But if you find one that find a book that's only worth one credit, then you can keep it and you can get download it for free, get it for free and keep it for free. Never to be returned. Yeah. Not a library. So there you go. That's right. So Aussie Tech Heads... If you cancel, if you cancel your Audible subscription, um, your account stays open. So at any time you can go back there right. and buy... But, mm. you, know, you can use your account as a pay-as-you-go. So if you don't want to pay the subscription, you, you can use it as, you know, I'll buy a book in three months' time or in six weeks or yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. So you don't have to commit to to spending a certain amount every month. Mm. Sometimes you just don't have the time to listen to it, but your account remains open. You can always go back and either join the subscription program again yep. and use get those credits or yep. just keep logging in like I do and just buy as I need to. Yeah. That's probably the go, isn't it? Like you don't, you probably don't have to buy. It. You don't want to do one a month. You could, but they look. They are cheaper if you are subscribed, definitely. Mm. But if you're only going to buy three or four a year, um, you'll probably spend less than if you were subscribing every month. Mm. So it just depends on on your on your uh, how you know. Each each person's different. Some some listen a lot and others don't. So now did whatever, you whatever? Oh. Now did you um did you have an audio? Would you want me to just to quickly just give a sample? Oh, audio here. I yeah. have an audio sample here if you want me to play. All right, let's have a let's have a listen to um Dennis Butskalaris. <laughs> but, that's it. And he's the narrator. Of course, but he couldn't afford it. After 32 years of lawyering, Oscar Finley couldn't afford much of anything. His junior partner, and Oscar was prone to say things like, "I'll get my junior partner to handle it." when trying to impress judges and other lawyers and especially prospective clients, was Wally Fig, age 45. Wally fancied himself a hardball litigator, and his blustery ads promised all kinds of aggressive behavior. We fight for your rights, and insurance companies fear us, and we mean business. Such ads could be seen on park benches, city transit buses, cabs, high school football programs, even telephone poles, though this violated several ordinances. The ads were not seen in two crucial markets, television and billboards. Wally and Oscar were still fighting over these. Oscar refused to spend the money. Both types were horribly expensive, and Wally was still scheming. There you go. Yeah, nice work. Good stuff. Did that come, that come through okay? Came through perfect. So don't forget, aussietechheads.com.au is the webpage. Click on the banner there. Um, you, get the, you get the free credit, and you're also helping us stay on the air. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You so Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, what else have we got going? Have you got a story? I think the head's coming on tonight. He's after. He's after one more story. Have you, if you've got another one, right, I'll, I'll throw one in, and then the head can come on and show us what he wants to show us. I'll just go and kick him um, out of the bum and get him in. All right. Now, last week uh, the stock exchange crashed due to a software upgrade, uh, and today the ASX has released a report pretty much brought that out. It says, um, ASX yesterday reviewed every technology manager's nightmare by revealing that last Thursday's four-hour outage, its longest in decades, was caused by a software upgrade that failed. I wonder if it was Microsoft. Skype. Skype. <laughs> it's not mentioned the new rival Chi X Australia, which began operations two trading days later on Monday. But an but an ASX explanation filed yesterday stated that the upgrade was designed to improve the latency of the trading system. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's a- Increase- All right, now we're getting a tech. We're going to get a layman's definition of this. Increasing the latency means increasing the possible speed of trading, <laughs> and it is well known that high-frequency traders are particularly keen to exploit any anomalies they can find in a price or speed between the ASX and the GX trading system. So. Obviously, that didn't work out for you, did it? No. So, well, the latency did improve once it came back online because the, the latency blew out the four hours. And That's right. <laughs> it's come back. So it's, it's been back. good. It's been good. From um, zero to, to just over zero. But it couldn't have happened at so, a worse time for them when a new one's entering the marketplace. 
oh, yeah, couldn't have picked the worst time for this to happen. The Chi-X would have just been laughing at him. Is one, if uh, now that this Chi-X thing's in here, and you've also got the Newcastle Stock Exchange, uh, is it... Do NSX. The, the NSX. Is the um, ASX, are they going to be a bit um, concerned? Or are they just going to go, nah, they've only got six stocks, you know, stuff them? Uh, well, that's what BlackBerry did. So I would say if they're smarter than BlackBerry, they will be watching their competitors very, very closely. Can you appear? Can your company old... appear on more than one exchange? Yeah, you can. Of course you can. Okay. So there's nothing to stop, say, except IBM? For except, I think for the, except for the Newcastle Stock Exchange. I think that's limited for particular types of companies, smaller oh, okay. um, companies. But I think GX is um, and, and um, ASX is... is um, yeah, the, the, the same sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, the head, the head, just about to sit down. He's coming in. And um, hang on, we're going to just pass his mic over to him. And uh, here we go. G'day. You got a, you got a, um, <laughs> you got a, <laughs> you got a question for the head. I think the head, he, he's got a, he's got a, had a few emails uh, this week. And he's got one right. there, Eric. I think if you can find in the list there, one ah, from, there one How from. Much, which one would you like me to read? Um, um, Jamal in or Maddie uh, in the Central Ma Coast. Yeah, Maddie D. I think is the one that I have selected this week. Okay, Maddie D. Da -da -da, you're the winner. Okay, Maddie D. From the Central Coast says, "Hello, head. Hope you're well. I'm looking to change my primary drive. I'm assuming he means hard drive." From 70 gigs to one terabyte. 70 gigs, is he fair yeah. income? What's yeah. his 1984? <laughs> he's, he's in the Stone Age. Matty D, 70 gigs. Drive, yeah, from 70 gigs to one terabyte, I'd go two terabytes. They're dirt cheap. As my operating system is on this drive, can I some way copy, some way copy this drive to the new one? And if so, how would you recommend I do this? Well... Would you pre Will this process be the only thing I need to do, or do I need to reload Windows? Thanks again for your tireless efforts in helping the community. P.S. You are not as ugly as some people are saying. Oh, that's I good. That. I just, I just <laughs> that. No, well, I remember last week the head got some really harsh criticism from from a female member of the the audience last week. Oh, he, head was very upset, but uh, he got over it as all good heads do. And um, yeah. now, 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 what was the question again? Oh, hard drives. Hard drives, that's right. Hard drive. He wants to switch hard drive, but he wants to transfer his operating system to the new drive without having to reinstall everything. Okay, well... I'm assuming he wants to uh, make an image of his drive and then yes. transfer that image to the new drive. Yes. Would that be correct? That's right. You can't just um, put the old hard, a new hard drive in and just do a you know copy and paste. That won't work because Windows has to be installed. And so do all the other software. So, look, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, now, there's the, we'll start off with the best way. The best way to do it that I, I've consulted with doyens around the country. And the best way, unanimously, is uh, Ghost. Now, that's by Norton's. Ghost 15. It uh, probably costs you about 80 bucks. Probably get it cheaper. Um, you know, they've got specials on. But say 80 bucks would be probably the, the most you want to pay for it. Um, yeah, so, you know, you can do, uh, there, there's a lot of features. Go to the webpage, uh, au.norton.com slash products. And look, uh, the, the head, I've even, I've even gone to the trouble of getting a, a webpage for you guys to have a look at. Uh, so that's the Norton. There's, you know, so you just go in there. There's no, where's the ghost thing? Oh, there's ghosty there somewhere. But anyway, there's ghost. But it's good. It's not too bad at all. It's, uh, how, how long does that normally take to ghost a drive of that size? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. 70 gigs a fair bit. Depends how much is on it, I guess. Uh, but, oh, no, no, no. A ghosting actually actually uh, copies, actually gets the whole the whole box of dice, apparently. I don't know. I haven't used the ghost for ages. I don't normally do it. Because what, because I've, like 70 gig for a heart for your main drive, I suppose that's not too bad. Like, my question would be, um, why wouldn't you put the new hard drive in and, and just keep the 70 there and just use the hard drive as drive D or something? Um, so oh, well, yeah, that's the other thing. You could use the. If he's if he it sounds like he's running out of space because he's saving all his data, pictures, movies, yeah. music, uh, documents, blah blah blah. Yeah, you, all you would do is move your documents folder to the new drive and just keep the operating system on, on the main drive. Mm. Um, mm. And that way, 
you know, how how long, how many how many gigs does uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Seven take up? Probably what, 10, Ooh. 20 gigs? Yeah, it'd be a bit. I think it's a bit. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's the only thing running on there. That's perfect because mm. then you've got a, you've got the re- the remaining drive. You know, thirty to forty gigs. It can use as a swap file for for more memory if it needs it without um, yeah without dip your into your um. But the, what but you call it? The good thing about drive. the good thing about the ghost is also it's a good backup thing. It's, it backs up as well. It's, it's not just a one 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 thing wonder. You know, one one right. feature wonder. It does a lot of other stuff as well. So you can continue to use it. You don't just have to do your 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 ghost of your drive and then throw it out. You keep going with it. You keep I, using would it. A, I would get a two terabyte drive. And if he's got, if he depending on what system he's got, I do a RAID one configuration on it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that way, if one drive, if one partition bugs out, the other ones then you can restore. Yeah. So there's a few ways to do it. There's up. There's another one out there called uh, Drive Snapshot. Uh, drive snapshot dot de slash en. That's the one I think has appeared. Leo talks about that a fair bit. That's a tr- that's a trialware version. It's about fifty bucks for a trial, free for thirty days. Seriously, ghost. If it's going to cost you a little couple of dollars more, like you, you don't want a free yeah, one. Yeah, look, you get to keep it, and if it's an automatic backup in the background, and it's you know, it, then why not? That's right. Acronis is another one. Google Acronis. Um, yeah, they're, like, they're one of the doyens that I I uh, consulted with Aussie. He's um when he's what was that when he's um yeah he he just said that that's that's what he uses all the time. So Aussie, he was on the show two three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Ago, yeah. yeah, the guy with. Is the, he on tonight? Right, he's not. He's not watching tonight. Hello, Oz. If you are, if you're listening. And then PA in the chat, clonezilla.org. So there's a few out there. There's a few out there, and it is that they are a good idea. Like they are a good idea. It saves you from reinstalling everything again. Um, oh, look! You take an image, a snapshot of your drive, and just you know throw it onto another drive, and then open the image. It's just you know, geez, hmm, saves you hours. Yeah hours and hours of reinstalling. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now, look, I just wanted to say, um, I've had a couple of emails saying that, you know, that my head's pretty fat and everything, and I just wanted to just let people know it's not that fat because, because and then they say, can we never see the side of your head? Well, the side of my head is not too bad. See? That's you look right. like Fatty Vorton. Hey? <laughs> but the, <laughs> this one. <laughs> How's <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the audio, if for the audio listeners, uh, he, Glenn's just making a tool of himself. <laughs> That's what we like. Very scary. The head does that. He likes the chicken dance. All right. Well, it's time for the head to get out of here. So, if you got a question for the head, I hope that's helped out, Matty D. You got a few options there. Uh, look, if the hard drive's still going, all right. There's no dramas with it. Um, and obviously, the, 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 there's no, uh, you know, Windows isn't slow or nothing because you're not going to be, you're not going to be cloning something that's crap. Uh, I, I just put another drive in and use it as you put, put uh, drive D. Why not move all your data from the seventy yeah. to the drive D? Transfer all your documents and data on there, music, movies, pictures, that's right. uh, whatever files. Keep your operating system on your existing drive, and uh, Bob's your uncle. That's right. All right. So I hope, yeah. uh, hope that's answered your question. And you can send emails to the head. Uh, the head at AussieTechHeads.com.au or find find him on Twitter at Ask the Head. Follow him. He needs he needs friends. He's got no friends. He's got about twelve or something. You know, he needs friends. Yeah, you know, big head. So while while the head's uh, going back to his little hole in the ground, I will read a couple of on this days. How would you like that? I would like that. Thank you very much. Right, what what happened okay. on this day? On this day, November three, two thousand eleven. Leonardo da Vinci was commissioned by the husband of Lisa Gerardini to paint her. The work is known as the Mona Lisa. There you go. Oh, there you the go. The first automatic tele 1892 on this day, the first automatic telephone went into service at La Porte, Indiana. The, vo- the device was invented by Alman Stroger. Oh, Alman Stroger. Yeah, on this day in 1900, the first automobile show in the United States opened at New York's Madison Square Garden. In 1952, on this day, frozen bread was offered for sale for the first time in a supermarket in Chester, New York. Right, they could have just went to Iceland. Yeah, could have. Uh, 1957, on this day, Sputnik 2 was launched by the Soviet Union. It was the second man-made satellite to be put into orbit and was the first to put an animal into space, a dog 
named Laika. Lika or Laika? Laika. 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 Yeah, good stuff. In 1973, the US launched the Mariner 10, the Mariner 10 spacecraft. On March 29, 1974, it became the first spacecraft to breach the planet Mercury. There you go. Oh, there you Interesting. Go. We've got a few spacecraft and, uh, going outside the solar system at the moment, haven't we? Yeah, we've got a few. Got a few. <laughs> uh, couple more. 1975, Good Morning America premiered on ABC TV oh, on how, this day. How nice for them. <laughs> how nice. And on this day in 1998, Bob Kane, the creator of Batman, died at the age of 83. Oh, you've got to go sometime, I suppose, don't you? But uh, <laughs> speaking of... No, 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 you're dead. <laughs> so now speaking of uh, things that have died, uh, I've got an email through the week from Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Jeff uh, listens to the show regularly. He also writes in regu- regularly as well. Uh, Jeff uh, wrote and said uh, his quad-core PC died for the third time. It's going third on. Third time? Third time. It's got to be a, it's gotta be a Windows. Yeah, yeah, quad core for third time. Can't, can't. Oh, yeah. So rather than resurrect the hard drive again, he bit the bullet and bought an iMac 27 with a 3.2 gigahertz processor. So okay, that's a nice machine. Yeah, but but, but sad news once again. There must be something going on with the power system. But it died within two weeks. The screen is fine. Then three seconds later. It's a kaleidoscope of colours. Then three seconds later, fine again. He guesses it's the video card. Um, Apple support could only suggest returning it, but they are, but they are only happy to have it returned because it's in the first two weeks of support and it's free. Well, I, does he mean? Well, I know Apple. If you buy something, you can return it for a full refund within two weeks. Hmm. Right. But if it dies and you want to keep it. It's tw- it's free for twelve months. Doesn't matter what's wrong. You keep bringing it back ten times. They're going to keep giving you a new one. Yeah. So it it seems like I don't I don't know. Did he, did he take it back? Did he take it back for good? Oh, he hasn't. He hasn't. Jeff, follow up. Can you um follow us up on that, please. Um. Yeah. Well, it doesn't say. He just says he's uh just stopped the email. Stop when he said he's going to take it back for the because it's in the two weeks. But um. But yeah, like in the lounge, we've got some lounge lounge comments here. Uh, Choxy or well, how do you say that, Choxy? Yeah, something to do with your power supply coming through into your house. Have I you... agree. You can't, you can't have um, a PC die three times and, right. a, and, a, and another um, a Mac. So it's not Windows versus Mac here. It sounds like it's something more serious, and mm. I agree. It's dirty power. And PA... Dirty, ha- yeah. dirty power. Yeah, PA uh, concurs. Dirty power, it sounds like. So I don't know what you would do. Where I don't know where Jeff is. Uh, it doesn't say... I'll get, the electro- I'll get the electrician around there to... Uh, uh, test your wiring yeah and maybe even if um in an area where you got some dodgy power lines and stuff going on maybe you'd get a little ups or something that could help with all these yeah, little yeah. Well, one of those uh power boards with um surge protectors on it which i've got a couple here in the studio because i got it, they've got it's 20 plugs in total right because there's 10 plugs on each power board yeah. and it's a you know, it's a power it's like a ups but just a power board yeah 10 plugs on each and they're all full. Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, I don't know what you call them. They're, I think there's a, there is a special name for it, but it's just a really long. I'll, I'll show you this long. I can't show you, but it's big. It's must be. It must be. Um, oh, geez, it must be a good six foot long, and it must have. It? It's like a. It's just just got power points all along it, and then. Oh, geez, what is it? Industrial. It's like some sort of industrial site. Yeah, board. it came out of a. Uh, 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 office or whatever, and like it must be split in half because there's two electric plugs coming out of each end. One electric plug coming out of each end, so half of it, you know, right. you plug into one socket, the other half you plug into another socket. And um, yeah, Jesus. here's what sort half, of half of Queensland would go dark when you plug that in. <laughs> I'll see if I could. Well, I can't probably take a photo of it because it's down the side of my back of my desk. But um, I'll see if I can take a photo of half of it for you for next week or something. But um, they're pretty All right, good. PA said it's called the power rail. Okay, yeah, good. that's it. That's what it is. Oh, um, just a one big mother. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're good, though. They're good. It's all in a row. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's true. It'd be nice and neat. Yeah. You wouldn't is. want to trip over it, though, because the whole freaking house would go out. <laughs> that's down the back of the desk. Right. Oh, good. Right good. down the back. Got an air conditioner back there? Wouldn't get very hot. <laughs> no, well, the air conditioner won't blow on it because the air conditioner's above it. 
No, it's all right. It, it, look, it's been going for a, a year. So, you know, it's all right. That's no worries. I start a fire, dude. No, it won't. Like, it won't. I got a small. You want to? Yeah, you want to have a look at my smaller one? I got a smaller one. Hang on. Go and show us. Show us your smaller one. This is. I know. I know. This makes for good audio. But um, I got a smaller one. There. He's moving, audio. He's just moving his camera, and he's showing us his smaller one. <laughs> Hang yeah. on. I, I just can't get it down far enough. <laughs> there it is. That's got a few on it as well. It's very small, Choxy, in the in the in the lounge. Yeah, there it is. What is it? It's only a it's only a thirty plug one. Yeah, it's my newt. <laughs> That's my newt. <laughs> Jeez, that camera gets hot. The little Logitech C nine ten. Oh, I'll get rid of it. Useless, hopeless. You get hot, you little camera. And oh, look now, I've, now I've shrunk. <laughs> now you look like you're sitting on a kitty chair. <laughs> All right. Well, let, oh, now I'm I'm not in the middle of the screen now. What's going on? There we go. All right, we've come to the end of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you can contact me, Eric or Will, Glenn, Eric or Will at aussietechheads.com.au. You can watch the stream live dot thesecrethub.com or pre-recorded, you know, the replay on the YouTube, youtube.com uh, forward slash the secret hub. Secret hub. Um, what else? Me, twit, my Twitter is Aussie Tech Heads. Eric's is at Eric Franco and Will's is at Mr. Tompkinson. Um, that's about yes. it, isn't it? That's about it. We finished? You got... You, you're done. done. You're done. Good stuff. Good well, night. Good night. And see you next time. We'll see you live next Thursday night, 7.40 Queensland time, right here on live.thesecrethub.com. Thanks for downloading. Bye for now. See you guys. <laughs>